What's going on everyone? I'm Encore. This is Tomorrow Never Comes. And today's video is going to be a smattering of a few things. First thing is going to be where we are today in terms of the market, what it looks like. And I don't mean just crypto market, just markets as a whole. I'm going a little bit of a history lesson. Zoom out a little bit and see where we are and where we've been and the course of the markets over time. And then finally, I want to give two strategies right at the end of how we are not only going to survive this market, but how we're going to change our lives going forward. Our financial freedom, generational wealth, however you want to phrase it, just even having the freedom to have options and make choices. I want to, I want to share two of them. And very simple, but it's something that the all the other components are really going to feed into as to why those two really work out well. So let's just jump right into this right now. So first, where are we? Like markets are getting killed left, right and center, right? I mean, we've got the Dow Jones down, you've got the Nasdaq down. I mean, there there's nothing that's down. Maybe commodities are up a little bit uh and some US Treasury things, but as a whole Markets are getting crushed. Stock market is getting crushed. And and what I want to kind of highlight here is the news that you're going to see no matter where you go. Okay, so look, rate hikes putting the economy into a danger zone. Canadian dollar hits the lowest level in two years. Uh, yesterday's Fed rate hike is a mistake. Here we're in for a hard landing with that rate hike. Uh, rate hike industrial panic set to burn a trillion dollar hole in Europe's pocket. And And really quick, I just want to do show you guys when I say let's do this and just show you the sea of red that's kind of there we're not going to get into any of these uh, in news headlines but if you just see the red the red the red okay just just absolute annihilation happening literally since November of last year right December for sure but around mid to late November was the peak all right so now we know, okay, you can turn on the news, you can read any article, and you're going to see things getting smashed left, right, and center. But where's the history matter? Okay, and, and this was something interesting. as a learning point for me as well, okay? Is that the first stock market was actually Amsterdam in the 1600s. So, so think about this. Where are we today, right? 2022, and it was in the 1600s that the stock market began. And that's going to be relevant when I get to the crypto market. And then the actual stock, New York Stock Exchange, you know, 24 gentlemen decided to make an agreement here in the 1700, late 1700s. And, you know, there you have the stock market. So that's still 1700s. And then, you know, the, the Philadelphia Stock Exchange was really, a, you know, just from researching here is what powered this new movement forward, uh, at least in terms of the U.S. stock market. And that was in 1790. Okay, so quite the history. So we're looking at 1600s, 1700s. All right, where's the crypto mark? Like when was crypto created? The Bitcoin started everything was 2009. So we've been looking at what? 12, 11 years? 12 years? Versus 1600s and 1700s. And that's very relevant. Okay, so keep that, keep that in mind. So here's a piece where we zoom out. All right, so this, and this is only... 1998 so not even i'm not looking in the 80s 70s or anything like that these these would actually be much more smaller uh these increments here okay but you can see since 98 yeah we've had some pretty pretty significant dips but where are we right now i mean when you look at the trajectory the overall trajectory of this line it's in an upward fashion and again that's why i said if i did the 70s and i did the 80s you would see these dips as even smaller. So as bad as things have been and all the conflicts, all the issues that have happened since 1998 and before, and this is where we are today, okay? So what looks really bad today, and there's no sugarcoating that, there's a lot of damage done in the markets and maybe even continuing forward. But they show up as blips on the radar over the long haul. So this is just the S&P. You look at the NASDAQ, which is what, Bitcoin and crypto markets are now essentially tied to until they decouple. Again, we've got the dot-com crash, early 2000s, and then everything else, we're just kind of slowly moving upwards, right? We've got these little dips in here, 
but again, overall the trajectory is upwards. So think of all the conflicts, all the issues we've had, and this is where we are today. Then you look at Bitcoin, and look, I'm talking about 2000, I'm talking about 1998, and here we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, where we're we looking at here. So this one right here would just be until 2012. Okay, this chart here, but we can go back to 2010 or so. No, not much different in the curve there. So we're talking about 2010, so 12 years, 12 years history versus 1600s, 1700s. And if the market had time to develop, the stock market had time to develop over 150 years, 120 to 150 years, then actually more than that, more, more, more time than that. Okay, so the 1600s and 1700s. Why is everyone comparing the Bitcoin and the crypto markets to that? We're such, I mean, it's such an, it's, it's, it's such a baby. 12 year span right now versus 1600s and 1700s. So I want everyone to keep that thought in mind because we have to zoom out. We have to zoom out. And blockchain technology is not going anywhere. What's tied to blockchain, blockchain technology is the cryptocurrency which sits on top of it. It's the incentive that really drives the blockchain technology forward. That's not going to go anywhere. Now, what it looks like 10, 15, 20, 100 years from now, who knows? But I do know it's not going anywhere. And so this is a very baby market that's going to have quite a bit of volatility. But when we talk about all, and I showed you guys, all the red that's happening in these traditional markets that have been here forever. And if those are getting hit hard, then why is everyone talking negatively about the crypto markets? Of course they're going to get hit. Of course they're going to be volatile. But what is going to be the long upward, the long trend over the next 15, 20, 25, 50 years? Just like we're looking at the stock market over the last 20 years, what is crypto going to look at and Bitcoin going to look like over 20 years? And that's something I want everyone to keep in mind. And so the two strategies based on all of this, if, if we understand that over the long period of time, history has shown us that markets usually trend upwards. History has shown us that. So no matter how big the impact is in the downward movement, over the long haul, you're better off being in the market than not being in the market. Over the long haul. All right. So two things Two strategies that really play into that is dollar cost averaging. That's number one. So what does that mean? That means you take a bite out of whatever you whatever you have done your research on consistently over time. So, you know, if, if you're going to buy Bitcoin today, you can set it up. We're on a weekly basis. This is a passive dollar cost average. You can set it up where automatically you spend the same amount of money, whatever that fits for you, and you buy Bitcoin every Friday or every or bi-weekly or monthly you set a schedule and a set amount you can also dollar cost average where, where you are actively engaged where you're looking at certain prices and when it dips you can buy irrespective dollar cost averaging is just buying at it's just about buying at different periods of time that's it so you can either set it up automatically or do it actively where you have to watch the markets. So number two though, is that we have to focus on generating income. Why is that important? I mean, obviously you wanna generate income just for your daily living, but you can't dollar cost average if you're not creating wealth, if you're not generating income, or you don't have any dry powder as they call it sitting on the sidelines. You can't accumulate money to deploy in the markets then you can't dollar cost average. So this so it's so, it's such a simple strategy, but psychologically it's such a hard thing to do. And that's something I'm also learning throughout this process is the it's the psychological part. Every part of you wants out. When markets are down, when fear is around, when headlines are going crazy saying markets are going to tank more, your wealth is going to zero, like all of this plays out. And you want out. That's just your natural reaction is you want out. But the ones who make the wealth, who make generational wealth, who make significant changes in their lifestyle, 
from a financial standpoint are the ones who stay in the game and continue to buy quality assets at a discount. And that's the name of the game, right? Buying something that has some staying power is a quality asset, but you're getting it for a discount. That's, that's the buyer's dream. We're in that phase right now. And I showed you guys that, look, over the long haul, here we are. Even if, even if Bitcoin and crypto stayed correlated to the NASDAQ, which I don't think it will over the long period, but let's say it does. Do you think it's better to be in the market over the long term or get out? I mean, this, this, this graph shows you everything. So it's very simple, but it's hard to do. And, and I would encourage everyone with small amounts, whatever is comfortable for you, find quality assets in the crypto market for me that's bitcoin and eth you can't go wrong that's my opinion it's not financial advice but you can't go wrong with those two assets and if you dollar cost average into those you know potentially we have a curve set up in a similar fashion so guys i hope you just understand that it's a psychological aspect that really kills us that's it it's not an intelligence it's, it's not an intelligence aspect at all. It's not about reading graphs. It's not about having you know the right network to give you the inside information. It's really about having the staying power. Psychologically, can we handle these dips? That, that's been a big takeaway for me and that's what I continue to learn. So can you handle, can your stomach handle the dips? And then also, do you have the income, the, the money on the sidelines that you've, that you've accumulated that you can deploy when everybody else is out and wants out. That's it. Guys, I hope you found value in the video. Share this video with anyone you think who may be struggling or wants to get in the market or is a little bit fearful. And definitely smash the like button if you found value. All right, guys. Have a great night, and I'll see you in the next video.